Hi everyone. Um, I just did a video on doing a, one of these painting, one of these bowls. And I'm going to do another one here with a sunflower on it. The last one was a purple flower. So I thought I would do a couple. Um, uh, I see a little, little rough area there. Let me get that off. Wipe it off with a wet sponge. You don't really, you don't really want to sand, sand dry. Anyway, so um, I'm going to use Amigo Velvet Underglazes. And then I'm going to outline it with this Zyam applicator bottle. And I just did a video too on this on how to fill these and um, how I use it. Um, I don't ever empty it. I store it with a pin in it. I store it upside down and I never empty it. Well, once it's empty, uh, when, when it gets about a third empty, I refill it. But I did a video on how I refill these. It's really easy, easy, easy. Um, so anyway, so I'm painting with Amigo Velvet Underglazes. So let me get started here. And if you have any questions, um, just ask me and I'll answer them later. <laughs> this isn't live. <laughs> um, so let me move this down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And I, um, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I put all my velvet underglazes, I put them in this tray. This is what works for me because I, I like using them kind of like watercolor. I don't like having to dip them in the jar and then you can contaminate the whole jar with the colors. Um, with this one, I put um, silicone under each divider there and then wait till that dry and filled it up. But someone told me um, on my one of my videos that um, I think they, at Walmart they found this with the dividers already sealed so that would be nice I have not found them yet so okay I'm gonna just wipe this off a little bit you just want to make sure all the dust is out Ooh. some clay just dropped on the floor so okay so I use um, this is standard 266 clay it's a dark clay when it fires like you can see some I don't know it's like a white residue there that will burn out and it'll be a very dark very dark brown clay so on the inside I put a white slip um, standard 266 is cone 56 you don't really want to go to cone 6 on the, the dark clay especially this uh, 266 it tends to bloat so I, I fired a cone 5 with about a 10 minute hole, then that usually takes me up to about five and a half. So then I put a slip on the inside, which I made from B Mix 5. My mistake was I used B Mix 5 with Grog. <laughs> so, which I will never do again. Um, but however, you can see this or not, but it has a slight texture to it from the Grog. So this isn't as smooth as what I'm used to. Um, which is kind of a bummer, but you live and learn, right? So anyway, so, okay, so, but yeah, so you can, you can use any outside clay, any color inside clay, as long as they're both, um, you know, the same cone. Like you wouldn't want to use a slip on the inside that has a higher cone or a lower cone than what the outside is because one of them is not going to get vitrified and it's not going to be completely food safe. Um, you want to use, if, you're, if your clay goes to cone six, you really should fire it to cone six or close to it. If your, if your clay goes to cone eight, you should fire it to cone eight. If, you're, if you buy a box of clay and it says cone four to eight, that means it's not going to be vitrified at cone four, five, six, or seven. It's not going to be 100% vitrified until it goes to cone eight. I never realized that until, you know, I learned it from some other people. So it's best to buy the clay for what you're going to fire to. It's, that's, you know, kind of important, especially if you're using it for food. If you're not using it for food, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm going to do a sunflower. So let's see here. I'm going to start out with um, 
the center here. And I don't um, draw mine ahead of time. Um, I just do it kind of freehand. That way, you know, each each bowl is a little different, a little unique, and it you know it looks more um, it looks more handmade. I mean, that's you know some people um, try to make their pottery really perfect but I don't know I mean if you want perfect you can go to the department store and buy it right I like mine to look homemade handmade handmade not really well it's homemade too but so like I said these are all um, Amigo velvet underglazes they they're my favorite I have to say um, I've been really happy with them. I've tried using some others, and I like to paint on the bottom of my pieces. And I've had some of the other ones stick to the kiln shelf. So needless to say, I was not too happy um, with that. Especially on my red birds. I, paint, I make these red birds. I don't know. Well, you'll see, I've got some videos of those. If you're watching this video, you've probably seen the red birds on here. So, let's see, I'm going to do a couple more. So, yeah, the red birds, I don't put a clear on those. And when I used this other underglaze, they stuck together. And that was not good. Not good. Okay. got my back door open today because I've got three dogs and they just go in and out, in and out, in and out. They're seniors, so I think they have, I think they have bladder issues. <laughs> oh my gosh. can't believe I'm talking about that on video. <laughs> They're always going in and out, in and out. It's like, geez. But one's, one's a Yorkie. Well, I have two Yorkies. One is um, 14. And one is um, 13 or 12, 12, 13. And that's actually his son. And then I have a Brittany who is about 12. So they're all getting, or she's 11, I think. They're all getting up there anyway. So now I'm just kind of going around each one with water. Just because I don't, I don't want it, um, I don't want any I don't I don't want the white areas and this is a way of just kind of softening it up like I said I don't I don't I don't like them um and then of course I'm going to outline these anyway with uh black velvet it's the jet black velvet underliner Amica's Jet Black. That's what I always keep in my um, Zyam applicator bottle. And I don't get any money from Zyam or Amico or anybody. I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a famous potter. <laughs> but I just, I just like them, so there you go. Okay, so... I call this my sunflower yellow. Um, let's see if I can move it closer, a little bit closer. And you can buy it this color. I think I just took the bright. Let me move it down. I just took the bright yellow and added a little bit of brown to it, I think. Okay, so now I'm going to take this. And I. Um, I used to water these down more, but I noticed they burn out burn out more. If you're going to fire these low fire, it doesn't really matter. You can water them down and use them like watercolors. But when you're firing, to cone, firing it, them to cone five or six, um, they, they, they can burn out some. So I...
This brush might not be big enough. Let's see. I'm going to get a slightly bigger brush. I just use these old cheap brush. Well, they're not really cheap. They're about $8 a piece, I guess. But, but um, I just get them at like Hobby Lobby or something like that. They're for watercolor, acrylic. So my main, my main, um, what I do at first here is just kind of get the leaves in place, get the shape of them. And then I fill, I fill them, fill them in a little bit, but I don't really, I don't really do too much until they. So I got them in place. And the glaze is going on okay over the grogged slip. But I bought some slip from Standard. Standard's white stoneware slip. And that is um, really nice and smooth. I, I love I love that. I'm, but I, I actually made these at... Um, the recreation center where I teach and I was making the grog from the clay we use there we use the B mix 5 with grog there because it's very user friendly with with beginner potters so that's what I bought for the students there and I wasn't thinking when I made this slip that it has grog in it. So of course the grog. Well, I even um, sieved it, but the sieve did not sieve out the grog. So, okay, so now I'm going back and just adding in more color. I'm gonna add a little, I'm gonna spray a little bit of water in here. Cause I've got a good base on here, but don't want it. So I've got, this is my second coat. Like I said, you want, um, and a lot of people say, well, how many coats do you put on? It's not really, I don't really, go by coats because I'm adding different colors. I mean, you, you definitely want an equivalent of like three coats, I think. That stops it from burning out as much. So, but, um, but I really don't, don't count the coats. Okay, so um, I want... There's a little tray here. I'm going to add a little bit of this brown. Let's see. But I want to water that brown down. I don't want it that strong. So I'm going to add, there we go, add a little bit of water. It might be, it might still be too, there we go. And I can always go back over it so it's not right. There we go. So I'm going to actually go back over it again. I think what I'll do is um, add a little bit of yellow into here. So I've got a little bit of brown mixed in. Let's see. Yeah, this is this is nice. 
That way it's not as, I like when the colors um, aren't solid, you know, it, it, um, you kind of mix the colors together and it creates, it's kind of streaky, I guess, but then your colors aren't um, flat, you know, you add some, some definition and some character. See how that does that there? And then, you know, not every leaf or petal is exactly the same color. I don't know if I should add leaves to this or not. Well, I didn't really leave too much room. I'll put some leaves on the outside. A little bit more yellow there. Yeah, that leaves a little dark. I'll go over that one again. Ah. Yeah, that's a little little darker than what I wanted. I'm gonna come back to that one and add a little bit more yellow, I think. It's getting a little, a little too, too dark. There we go. And you don't, you gotta kind of be careful. You don't, um, when you're adding these colors, that you don't have any really thick spots, because they will pop through the clear glaze. It's like they suck up um, the flux that's in the clear glaze and you end up with a matte and it's not you know I'm sure it probably doesn't really hurt but it's not as food safe I hope I'm in the picture yeah am I in the picture <laughs> get, get that out of the way so here's that dark one there we go. I'm going to add just a touch of, ah, look at that, what I did. Add a touch of the white to help, help brighten that up. There we go. See, so I put, I actually, I put quite a few coats on here. I think I like that. Huh. I don't want to get this darker at the bottom here. Hope you guys can see okay. There we go. So I want to make the bottom of the leaves just a little bit darker than the top. And I kind of lost some of that when I was um, going over it with the yellow. I used to love to watch Bob Ross when I was younger. I still like to watch him. I find him in a couple places. Some of you young guys probably don't know who Bob Ross is, but oh my gosh, he would, his painting was just um, awesome. He did watercolors though. So I'm just going to darken this in around the edges here because I I don't really want all that white there. I 
And I don't hand draw anything out. I just kind of, kind of wing it. So that's what it looks like so far. You can kind of see, it's not really looking like too much now. But you can see the petals. Can you see the different colors? Hopefully you can. Oh, I think I got some white underglaze on there. Okay, so I think I kind of like, I think I kind of like the way that looks for now. Um, I think I'm going to put a couple leaves in there. Just a couple small ones. Kind of looking where I have a big enough spot to sneak a sneak couple in. Real sunflower leaves are, you know, a little bit bigger than this, but that's okay. This isn't real, right? It's just a whimsical, just whimsical flower, make believe. We're not uh, botanically probably correct anyway. So I'm going to go over that just a little bit. Let me make sure hummingbirds not coming in here. I can hear the hummingbirds um, out at my feeder. Just trying to get some more definition. I said you gotta be careful not to get a fixed spot either because like I said the it'll suck up the the shiny part of the glaze the flux and then you'll end up with a dull spot and you don't want that so I'm going to go over the leaves again because green has a tendency of burning out brown at this high temperature, like I said, it was low fire. The colors are always a little bit brighter, low fire, but the high fire, they burn out a little bit. Okay, so then I'm going to put some leaves around the outside here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. an awkward trying to hold it so it's in front of the camera I can move it back just a little bit ah, I think now we're crooked there we go there we go now sometimes which I just forgot to do what I get for trying to talk and do two things at one time. Um, when you're painting underglazes on this dark clay, you can um, paint a white underglaze on first and then your 
underglaze and the white glaze will make the underglaze pop a little more. So we'll see. We'll see when it comes out of the kiln if we can tell the difference. These will these will be fired probably um, today's Saturday. Maybe tomorrow morning I'll fill the kiln. So I'm going to add a little bit of this chartreuse over the top just to um, give it some definition and brighten it up a little bit. One time, like I said, I leave the back door open so that my dogs can go in and out because they're in and out constantly. One time I left the back door open and this little snake came in and I didn't realize it. And my son's like, mom, there's a snake in the house. <laughs> Thank goodness he was just a little guy. It was only like maybe a foot and a half long. <laughs> so I got it. So if you see me looking back, it's because I'm checking the door, make sure we've got snakes around here, a lot of them. And you hate to kill them because they're, you know, they're good for the environment. They eat, they eat the rodents, you know. Okay, and then I'm going to put Oh, I was going to Then I'll put a little uh, leaf on the bottom. Well, it's kind of hard. I put a texture on the bottom of this. So I'm not I'm not sure how I'm going to outline that with black outliner. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just add a little little brown, and then I won't use the liner. Not 100% happy with it. I'll have to figure it out. But okay, so let's add the let's add the liner to this. Let's get rid of let's get rid of that. So as soon as it's dry, I outline it, and then um, as soon as the outline's dry, I can go ahead and clear it. So with the tip on the oops, I thought I use a Zyam applicator tip. I think it's a 20 tip. So with the pin in there, just shake it up good. You don't want any clumps in there. Okay, so let's do the outside first. I'm in an art show next, it's actually more of a farmer's market type of thing, I guess, in Cheviot, Ohio, which is really Cincinnati, Ohio, kind of, um, next Saturday, August 7th, and then I should try to put some of this on my Etsy site, but I'm really bad about that. Okay, so let's do the inside. I always start off in the center. Let's see if we can get you a little bit closer for this. There you go. Um,
I think the black outlining really makes the colors pop. And like I said, I, um, I like to bisque my pottery first and then paint it. I've, I don't know, I've tried doing it on the greenware and I don't really care for it because if you make a mistake, you're wiping away glaze and clay and, um, and I kind of, you know, the way I do it with scratching it like this, I think I would scratch into the clay. And if you hold it too tight or do something weird, you're, you're going to break your piece after you just spend an hour glazing it, <clears throat> paint, painting it. Some people say the colors are richer if you um, paint them on the greenware, but I don't know. I don't. <clears throat> I don't really find that to be that true. They're definitely richer if you're um, doing it low fire. They stay much. They stay much brighter. But. Like I said, if you don't, as long as you don't water them down, um, <clears throat> underglazes can be used from low fire, like 018, all the way up to cone 10. Because underglazes are really just, um, they're just clay and pigment, clay and stain. It's, they don't have any flux in them, which is the glossy part. Let's do the let's do the petals. It kind of makes a little musical sound, doesn't it? <laughs> you see, I just wipe wipe the tip of my applicator on a sponge. these will all be available next weekend at the West Side Market uh, Festival 10 to 3 Harrison Avenue Chevette Ohio come by and say hi I was gonna bring my horse trailer that I had turned into a pottery trailer but I don't know somehow I must have screwed up on the application form and they hit me down as a in a tent so which is not a problem i'll just bring my 10 by 10 tent they could add me in the trailer but um they don't have any electricity left they got they have food trucks and bands and you know all that stuff so and if, you know if it's hot i need a fan in there and i need i need electricity for the lights and so we're not going to, we're not going to bring the trailer. Hopefully, um, I'm in a show at the end of September, Casey's Outdoor Solutions or something. It's a landscaping company, uh, by Hidden Valley Lake in Indiana. I'm going to do that one and I'll definitely have my trailer there. So that should be fun. That's a fun one. That's like September 25th and 26th, I think. And then, um, then I always do the Vina Galette Art and Wine Festival. They have live music and all these wine tasting things. That's um, the second week of September. And um, that one's kind of fun because everybody's walking by drinking bottles of wine. <laughs> kind of gets kind of crazy there too 
Lots of wine drinking. <laughs> Lots of loose pocketbooks. That's every September at the uh, Vina Gillette Winery in Colerain Township, Ohio. I think that's it. Let's see here. Let's see if I want to add a little more darkness here. And you got to be kind of careful too about this dark, this black. This is Amica's Jet Black. Um, if it globs up, it can also show through the clear glaze. Like, you know, turn it turn it um, flat. Let's see here. I think that's it. Looks looks good to me. Let's see. I'll show it to you guys. There you go. Everybody likes the sunflower bowls. They sell out pretty quick. There you go. I don't know if you can't really, I don't know if you can see the really, the leaves really have a lot more definition to them with the colors than what I think the camera's picking up. I just use my phone camera. I don't know how to work all that fancy equipment. <laughs> so there we go. If you like my videos, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand people. <laughs> I'm only at 750 or something like that. Okay, and then the bottom. I did go ahead and put liner on the bottom and it went over there fine. Look at that. And that surface. Sometimes I like to put um, some texture on my bowls. Uh, when you pick them up, they don't fall, they don't, you know, slip out of your hands. But so that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, I do try to answer as many as I can um, in the um, in the comments section. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. Have a great day.